Hey, friend. Chris Vandiver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, let's talk about managing mono and stereo tracks across your projects. How to change mono to stereo, stereo to mono, how to adjust the orientation of software instrument tracks, and how plugins can further complicate or enhance your workflow in this department. You'll see in this video that the Logic Mixer is incredibly versatile and allows you a lot of opportunity. You can change a mono track to stereo, back to mono, back to stereo, as many times as as many plugins are allowed on a channel strip, which I believe is limited to 15 plugins per track or channel strip. There's a couple areas you can look to adjust this orientation. First, let's take a listen to the session that I created for last week's video on the 10.6 update. Just a fun little riff that I wrote. It's so much fun and so awesome to see what can be accomplished just with Logic. We're going to hone in on this track in particular because it's the only audio track in a sea of software instrument tracks. But don't worry, we're going to dig into the software instrument tracks as well. If we take a look at the mixer, we can see across the board just about everything's in stereo. And only this bass track at the moment is in mono. And you know this because the mono track has a slightly slimmer peak meter. Stereo tracks have slightly fatter, and these stereo peak meters have enough room for both the left and right channels. If we just play again. Super easy to see what's stereo, what's mono. Now, audio tracks are probably what everybody's familiar with, so we're going to start there, and then we'll work our way through software instrument tracks and plugins. If we take a look at the input section on this bass track, we have the input selector and to the left of it, a circle. The circle indicates to us a mono track. And for audio tracks, it's so easy to change the orientation from mono to stereo. You just click right on the circle once. And now we have a stereo track. We have two circles interlocked. This lets us know left and right in stereo. That's why they're interlocked. And the peak meter has changed from a slim peak meter to a slightly fatter one for the left and right channels. Take a listen. Awesome. Now, audio tracks afford many other orientations as well. You just click and hold on these circles. You have the option of mono, stereo, the left side only, the right side, or in surround. If we switch it to left, we get these two independent circles. The left side, I believe, is slightly shaded. If we click on it now, we can switch from the left to the right. So now the right side is more emphasized. Or we can switch this to surround. And now we get a surround panner. Everything's been adjusted. I'm going to switch this back to stereo for now. And of course, we have the stereo panner. We need to make sure to set the output back to stereo output. I only recommend selecting the surround orientation if you're actually working in surround. And this is about the extent of it for audio tracks. It's so simple. You just click on the circle, switch it back and forth. You're good to go. There are other elements like plugins that can make it a little more complicated. But let's move on to software instrument tracks and then plugins. For software instrument tracks, you may have different options to choose from. If we head to Alchemy over here, click on the drop down. Alchemy only is affording us stereo. So we don't have the option to switch to mono necessarily within the input selector for the software instrument track. But if we go to Sampler here, do the same thing. Sampler offers us different orientations. So we can choose mono or stereo or multi output or 5.1, so surround essentially. And so if you want to set Sampler here to mono, you're more than welcome to. We'll have to change the orientation of the plugins as well on this channel strip. As we can see, it's still in stereo. But if we take a listen to this track, we can hear that it should be in mono. Cool, I'm gonna switch it back to stereo for now so we can hear that. Awesome. Now, given the case of Alchemy, that doesn't offer us the opportunity to switch to mono or stereo. We're just stuck with mono. How do we manage or deal with that scenario? Well, sticking with my synth track here, we can instantiate a gain plugin and just collapse it to mono. Check it out. We can switch it back. 
The only thing to be concerned with is that our channel strip as a whole is still considered a stereo channel strip. The peak meters still indicate a stereo channel. We see the left and right sides independent of one another on the peak meter. And the pan knob should still be a balance knob. With the case of the game plugin, you probably want to change this to a stereo pan knob so you can pan the entire signal to left or right so that you'll be sure to pan the entire signal and not just balance the signal. And I have an entire video all about true stereo panning in Logic, which I'll link in this video just to check it out. Okay. Now, perhaps you don't want to use a game plugin. Perhaps you want the entire channel strip to be collapsed to mono. In that case, let's get rid of this. And on this channel EQ here, even though it's bypassed, if we hold option and click, go up to channel EQ, we have the option to switch it to either a mono instance of the channel EQ or stereo. By default, it's in stereo. And if I don't hold option and click, go back, we only are given the options of stereo or dual mono. Basically, Channel EQ is going to be stereo no matter what, unless we hold option and click. And now if I switch the channel EQ to mono, we can see everything has been collapsed to mono. Now this channel strip is considered mono. We can see that the pan knob and that the peak meter has adjusted to indicate that to us. Let's now take a listen. Switch it back to stereo. I don't have to hold option to go from mono back to stereo. Cool. So you can either use a gain plugin to collapse to mono or just adjust the orientation of the last plugin in the channel strip from stereo to mono. And we can do it in the opposite direction as well. If we go right here, we have our bass track, collapse this to mono, hold option, click, channel EQ, stereo, and we're right back where we started. Obviously this bass sound is mono already, so let's introduce an instance of chromaverb in stereo. So I'll go to the details page, expand the width pretty wide so we can hear this. Okay, let's bring it back to this old tape synth. The other thing to pay attention to is the orientation of the plugins that aren't last on the channel strip. Because maybe you've instantiated a mono instance of this pedal board. But nothing's changed. We know pedal board's in mono, but the pan knob is still either a balance or stereo pan or binaural pan. The peak meters are still a stereo peak meter set. What gives? Well, the thing is, is that the other plugins after pedal board are still in stereo. Now, because pedal board has been switched from stereo to mono, if we look at the microphaser, we don't even have to hold option to now be given the option of either changing the orientation to mono for the microphaser or mono to stereo. Given that pedal board is mono, we can now open up the stereo width of this track by converting it from mono to stereo. But we're gonna go all mono on this one. So the same thing for the channel EQ, mono. Now we're collapsed down to mono. But don't forget the compressor is still in stereo and that's how versatile or crazy your channel strips can get. Your compressor can be in stereo, your pedal board can be in mono, the microphaser, if we hold option now, we can switch it to stereo and the channel EQ, we can switch to dual mono. There's just so much opportunity and versatility for processing your tracks. So for software instrument tracks, you can choose either the input selector some may offer you different orientations, mono, stereo, surround. Some may not, like Alchemy. You can choose different orientations within the channel strips using the plugins, and you can change the orientation literally plugin by plugin. The only other thing to be concerned with is your stereo output. I've received projects from Logic users where they're like, hey, my project's in mono, but I don't see it. Like, how is that possible? And that's because one of the plugins on the stereo output happen to be in mono while the rest weren't. So if we move the limiter down, you can't option click on the stereo output to instantiate a mono instance, but maybe we copied and pasted from a mono track. So let's take this channel EQ, drag and drop it. Take a look, now we're in mono on this channel EQ while the limiter and the game plugin are both in stereo. So take a listen. 
Take this out of solo. But if I remove the channel EQ here or switch it back to stereo, Boom, we're back in business. So as you can see, there's so much versatility. There's so many opportunities to adjust the orientation of your tracks from mono to stereo, stereo to mono, left to right, right to left. But there's a lot of opportunities for confusion or overlooking the fact that maybe you dragged and dropped a mono plugin on the stereo track and it's now forced that track into mono or vice versa. So I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Thanks so much.